So you did make it through an Espionage Act prosecution. Yes. Rare. Yes. And the next person with a big target on their back from the Espionage Act, Julian Assange, who would be the first uh, publisher to be charged with the Espionage Act, correct? Well, actually, if it goes, yes, there was an attempt in World War II, but they, they thought if they brought it to court, because there was some quote unquote secrets in terms of cryptography, it was in Chicago. It's an interesting case, but they chose not to bring it because it would have revealed too much. Hmm. And then there was Dan- then there was Ellsberg. But in his case, he's a leaker, you know, not a publisher, right? So that's correct. But I'm just saying there was an attempt. There was a. Po- it's always been. It was just question as to whether or not the DOJ chose to whether to not to go after or not go after. Julian Assange presents a very interesting case because he's a foreign citizen, mm-hmm. but they're treating him as a spy, and they want to make an example of him. They want to set a precedent. No matter what else people think of Julian personally, or any other connections, or or politics, right? People just forget history. Obama chose to not go after WikiLeaks and Julian because they knew the bar was so high. Because if they set that precedent, as came out during Chelsea Manning's court martial, and I was there for a number of those hearings at Fort Meade, Maryland, when asked, I was, I heard, it, was a, it was stunning, could have heard a pin drop. What's the difference between quote unquote, leaking to WikiLeaks and leaking to the New York Times, the Washington Post, or the Boston Globe, or the LA Times. And the prosecutor said, no difference. Wow. Well, if they can set it, set an example, a precedent with Julian, as a publisher, that means any publisher or journalist anywhere revealing anything in the public interest, it doesn't like they can go after him in the name of national security. Anybody in the world. And it becomes a yeah. long arm reach, right? Yeah. Despite no evidence to date, I'm the first to say this again. I keep saying it, but not the first, but I keep saying it. Despite no evidence to date on anything WikiLeaks has released, there's been no proof of harm resulting from any of the revelations. People have alleged it. People have said there was compromise. I have yet to see proof. People make claims that there is, but the Trump administration is actually going one step further. They're declaring that the mere publication of any information it deems protected is in itself deserving of criminal prosecution, as if it were espionage. Now, you tell me what's that path you if that's why they want to set the precedent go back and thomas jefferson or james madison they couldn't stand the press at times but jefferson himself if he had to give up he, the last thing he was going to give up is a free press yeah because they are and they're the fourth estate mm-hmm. i'm aware of people that want to see julian fry i'm aware of people from a national security establishment that because he poked you know power in the eye People have made all kinds of allegations and claims. Um, you know, people try to make it personal. I, the bottom line is a publisher. He's not a whistleblower. He's a publisher. He relies on sources. He's doing the same thing that any other journalist reporter of any worth does. Look, the reporter in my own case, who obviously will not talk about the case, but I can freely talk about it. I had a relationship with that reporter. I've gotten to know all kinds of reporters, including the reporters that I allegedly went to that I didn't in the, at the New York Times. <laughs> they do the same thing. Oh, but they're saying we don't hack. We don't. Well, that's that's part of the frame here. Yes. Trying to use his background and somehow it's because they just want to make an example of him. Yeah, people don't understand that only one charge uh, is about hacking. And that's like a max five years, 17 of the 18 charges, uh, which is 170 years of charges. Yes. That's all about obtaining and disclosing 
classified information or national security information. Yeah, that's correct. But no different than what any journalist reporter worth their salt does in this space. Yeah. No different. No different. They made a big thing out of this list of like most wanted stuff, most wanted. They've actually blown that out. That is not unusual either. National security reporters. I've gotten to know a whole lot of them on and off the record. They're all, I mean, think about Woodward and Bernstein of all the president's men fame. Woodward himself has written a number of books. He obviously has extraordinary sources. We're talking super high level. Has anybody gone after him? That's because they leaked to him, right? Quote, unquote, in an authorized manner. It doesn't, but it doesn't matter though, does it? You're still leaking. Oh, because we're authorizing it. No one's gone after Woodward. No one, there's no, been no talk at all. What's the difference? So it's only certain kinds of information? Wow. Only information that embarrasses people. Ah, uh-uh. embarrasses, calls out violations of the law, fraud, waste, and abuse, threats to public safety or health. I find it really disturbing that Woodward hasn't said anything, as far as I know. Yeah. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be surprised, but it's, it's just it's really disturbing. I mean... Well, he's become more of an establishment with extraordinary access. Yeah, but what's insane is, all, like we've been saying, on paper, yes. if Assange is guilty, Woodward belongs in jail too. That's correct. And he could get thrown in jail. Yes, and there are lawyers who are the first to tell you the rules are the rules, quote unquote. It doesn't matter. And there's nothing that precludes under the Espionage Act for the government going after the publisher. But see, if you're a U.S. press, they can hide behind, we're the U.S. press. We're not Assange, but there's no actual difference. Yeah. And that's what's frightening about this. Mm-hmm. See, so if you charge an espionage, it's, it's strict liability. It doesn't matter, right? You have violated Nash security, and that takes precedent over anything else. Real spies, I'm, look, I was hung up on a rogues gallery of spies by the Insider uh, Threat Task Force as a joint DOJ, DNI. Me and Snowden hung up with traditional spies, including at Robert Hansen. They have all, you know, all the traditional spies have flags of the countries to which they were, right? China, Soviet Union, Cuba, et cetera. Guess what? Under Snowden myself, there were no flags. We, we were, were persona non grata. We're, we're people without a country. That's how I was treated. Mm-hmm. So what does that tell you? When you mentioned, you know, your man without a country, that actually made me think of, well, Julian's Australian. Aust- just so people know how terrible things are right now, how scary things have gotten. Australia is not sticking up for Julian. Oh. And didn't you have a recent experience in Australia? Did you not get censored yes. in Australia? Glad you brought this up, Matt. You're one of the few, you're actually the first has brought it up directly in an interview without any, without any prompting. So obviously my case was quite public, not like Snowden, but it was very public. And because I didn't end up in prison, it generated its own publicity. So I was in great demand. And then when the Snowden revelation hit, then it was just, it went through the roof. So over the years, and we're talking since 2011, I've lost count of the interviews, the panels, speaking engagements, et cetera. However, in all of those, in all that time, I've never been censored. Now there's certain, there's certain like black hat knows I'm never, I'm not invited to, and I know why, but I've never been censored until I was in Australia at their premier cybersecurity conference last fall. All accepted, and eight days prior to the start of the conference, the head of their cybersecurity center did the kibosh, rubbed me out, and an Australian research professor from the University of Melbourne. That never happened before. Now, what's the relationship? The link was Snowden and Assange, just so you know. I didn't go there to talk about whistleblowing, ironically enough. (laughs) I was talking about the golden age of surveillance and what does it mean for privacy? What does it mean for democracy? 
here I was in Australia, which is supposed to be a democracy, although they don't have a constitution. And I can't speak at the conference. And I probably would have spoken to maybe 50 to 100 people. And in fact, when it came up in Parliament, um, one of their budget hearings, and she, her name is, she, she was directly asked, why? Right, why? Well, apparently I was incongruent. I was not, it was not in accord with the conference. But she acknowledged it was her decision to snuff me out. It's because you're a dangerous man, Tom. <laughs> well, no, apparently I was. And so yeah. there, was, there was actually concerns in terms of security. Never had a problem getting in, never had a problem getting out, okay? But it was unprecedented. It's the first time ever in which I, and in fact, even a professor, Professor Dreyfus is her name, even she had never been censored anywhere in the world. And she's spoken in countries that are not true democracies as well. Oh, my God. So it, was, it just tells you how far down the dystopian path we've trod. It's really, really concerning. I... I and rights and freedoms are, are, you can't take them for granted. I have all this cancel culture. I, it's, you talk about cancel? That's what they tried to do is the government tried to cancel me out in the U.S. The head of their cybersecurity center canceled me out from a conference because I was too dangerous to speak there. It caused a huge stir, by the way. There's people, from, we're talking from the stage, guest speakers, calling out the bs oh great great oh yeah no it caused a huge dramatic i mean it you talk about major publicity good i mean in america i didn't see obvious i didn't see anything really no well that's the other one it's like i talked to a washington post reporter about it and they had no idea what had happened it's down under you know you got to remember it's U.S. You don't think too much about the rest of the world except yourself. And if you're inside the Beltway, that's in a whole nother bubble in itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you mentioned how the press is partly responsible for uh, Trump, and um, yes, they are. And what kills me is is the really the only way that we can get out of this mess and this trajectory towards more and more authoritarianism is the press. That's the, like that's they're supposed to be the solution. And not only are they exacerbating this problem by promoting Trump and then focusing on the, the minor character issues, they have been actively villainizing real journalism. Yes. You're sabotaging their own profession. For what? Our access? What is the, I mean, dude, it's... This Assange case is so huge. It's so huge. I just hope we can inform people enough people to have an impact because in your case, you, you've said that in addition to obviously the official courts, the, the court of opinion was very significant. It's hugely significant. I knew that I would have to influence a court of public opinion. I knew that. I could not literally stand on the truth of what I had done or not done, despite all the accusations and allegations and all the charges in the indictment and rely on this on the courts because it was all sealed because it was under espionage act and national security rules the courtroom was sealed there was very few public hearings so there was no even access by the public for most all of the hearings because they were national security related this is also part of what's been happening so where, where is the public opinion? And Assange is foreign. He's in a maximum security prison in Belmarsh. Where's the press standing up for him? I know there's international press that have been standing up for him and other international lawyers. But at best, the voices in the United States are muted. So is, is it come, is it come to its only authorized leaks that are approved? Because that means it's it's Mockingbird. This is the CIA program called Operation Mockingbird. We're going to tell the press what we want them to hear. But that's propaganda. Now, under the NDAA, they are actually allowed to do that. This goes back a few years. I, I fought against this. This was big rallies up in New York City. If you go back to the 2012-2013 timeframe, against NDAA in part because what they also included in there, not just pulling people off the street, 
right? And declare him an enemy combatant or the equivalent because you're a threat, right, to national security, but also government being authorized to publish, promote, and, and in concert with the press propaganda. Ooh, I, sh- I uh, you know, this is the dark, the dark history of the 20th century and Nazi Germany, all right, and other equivalent types of government stru- governance structures start Blah, start screaming in my ear. I haven't said this in a long time. He's still alive. He's 89. Mikhail Gorbachev. The eighth and last leader of the Soviet Union. He saw the handwriting on the wall in 1985. Mikhail Gorbachev transformed the Soviet Union from authoritarian dictatorship to fledgling democracy. Why do you think he entered into what he entered into? He realized that that system of governance could not endure. Please feel free to put a ray of <laughs> sunshine or hope on this shit, but it couldn't endure, but could it endure with the technology of today's surveillance state? Yes. That's fucking terrifying. Yes, it is. And that's, that's actually what we're facing. You want to talk about the dystopian future that I already live. I've already lived what it means to have the eye of the government spying on you almost 24 7 physically trailing you electronically surveilling you literally taking an electron microscope and drilling down to the most intimate parts of your life imagine what that is like if what they want to do is use it against you because they consider they've defined you as an enemy of the state a threat to national security deserving of not just punishment but deserving to be put away for a long, long time because you dared to expose, you dared to call out abuses of power. Who cares that we violated the rights of Americans? They didn't do anything wrong. No harm, no foul. Really? That's not the point. <laughs> you know, everyone's worried about cancel culture and I, it's a problem. It's a problem. But like yeah. I said at the beginning... The ultimate, most terrifying, most problematic cancel culture that nobody seems to be talking about is how the government can cancel you. Yes. People are getting canceled just for having social media. <laughs> yes. And writing articles 30 years, three to three, three years ago, like yep. the latest uh, Boeing guy. Yeah, I saw that. But the government, the government's got more than just that. The government's got everything. They've got search history. Enormous power, prosecutorial power, and the ability to put you in prison. Yeah, everything. All your information that's currently private. Look what's being done with information that's out there publicly about you. And just and you have this yeah. million times more information private that the government has, and they can frame anybody just like they framed you. So right. after after speaking with you, um, okay. am I now on an NSA watch list or what? Anybody can be on a watch list, but no, I I think it's fair to say you're not on a watch list. Okay. But remember, you are you are exercising and practicing the First Amendment with respect to the Constitution. <laughs> that so that might get me on a watch list. <laughs> That's correct. Exactly. You gotta be careful there, Matt. <laughs> Don't go too far. But look, I, I will I will end I'll end something with you that I've done in the past, I haven't done in a while. There is the Greek mythology, the Greek myth of Pandora's box. It's open, right? Pandora's box, it's open. That's so all the theories can escape. But get what lies at the bottom? There is something left at the bottom after all the theories. I looked into the box and the abyss looked back at me. I was inside the box during my own ordeal. But after everything escaped, including myself, what's at the bottom of the box? Hope. Hope lies at the bottom of Pandora's box. So if you're standing on hope, then there is hope for the future. I mean, I have people in my network, Matt, that have checked out. They don't, they just say, Tom, or they tell me, why bother? You already paid a high enough price. You almost ended up in prison. Why would you continue to speak out about these things? Because it matters to who we are as human beings. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're not standing up and speaking truth to power and about power and holding power to account and sort of 
holding our collective arms together, both literally and virtually, and especially now with COVID, you know, virtually, then that should say something. We have to care about each other. Yeah. There's a lot of platitudes that, that are promoted out there in terms of how we're supposed to live. But when it comes right down to it, what are those values? And so the choices you make each and every day are what realizes those values. Those are the living values of, of our lives. And I choose to keep standing on that moral arc of the universe. Remember, that's all I'm doing. They tried to hang me off of it. All I'm doing with a number of others is standing on it, jumping up and down, just a, maybe a little bit, just enough to bend it toward justice. And as I like to add, and mercy. Otherwise, what's life all about? That is, you know, so the choices you make do matter. Yeah. I appreciate the time, Matt. I just want you to know. Thank you. I, I appreciate it incredibly. And again, on as far as hope, I'm with uh, you. And, and your story is a hopeful story. You, you won. Yes. You beat the government. Yes. And we can Actually, do it again. See, this is the thing. I didn't lose. I didn't end up in prison. I'm actually in a very, Ellsberg knows how extraordinary it was because because of his own experience. Not ending up in prison is a victory all by itself, given what we both faced. It could have been a far worse outcome. I'd still be in prison to this day. If I had accepted a plea agreement of 20 years, I'd still be in prison. Wow. That's a different life, isn't it? Amazing stuff. Thomas Drake, we've got a republic. If we can keep it, thank you for your efforts to helping us keep it, hopefully. Keep on keeping on. Thanks so much, man. Thanks so much, Tom. Take care now. Fuck you, Matt. You're making my cock fall off. Man, great job, Matt. He goes by the name Orf. Wonderful job. Let's call him Matt, because I don't want to butcher his name. Matt Orphalia. Matt Orphalia. Matt Orphalia. Subscribe to him. Matt Orphalia. Matt Orphalia. Matt Orphalia. Matt Orphalia. <laughs> Incredible. You got to be careful there, Matt. <laughs> don't go too far.